to announce that we are officially launching the Canadian Elite Basketball League that will begin play in May of 2019, and it is going to bring professional basketball to Canada in a big way. We are very excited to call Guelph home for the 2019 season. With today's launch, we're celebrating the first professional basketball team in Abbotsford. So in June, we announced that we are moving to the Canadian Elite Basketball League. For the first time in over five years, professional basketball is making a return to Edmonton. Come May, Saskatchewan will have a third professional sports team. Picking in the fifth position, the Hamilton Honey Badgers. Massey, he looks over near side, contested three. Saskatchewan Rattlers are the champions in the inaugural season in the Canadian Elite Basketball League. 94-83, the final. New cases and deaths associated with the coronavirus continue to climb right around the world. Ontario has declared a state of emergency. Alberta is declaring a state of public emergency. I am declaring a provincial state of emergency. Let me be clear, if you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. The coronavirus has brought the entire sports world to an abrupt halt. This astounding and unprecedented story continues to evolve. It feels like the country's return to normal is somehow interconnected with the sports world's return. Get your preparations ready for possibly playing with no fans. Breaking news from CBC National, the CEBL eyes the Meridian Center in St. Catharines as the host site for a month-long basketball tournament starting in mid-July. You know I gotta come back. Gotta come back. Mike Morelli, the commissioner of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. They will be the first professional league in Canada to resume play. they got a tournament scheduled for St. Catharines, Ontario, starting July 15th. Mike has been kind enough to join us on this Friday edition of Tim and Sid. All right, fellas. Quite frankly, we are going to be one of the very few uh, leagues playing basketball in the entire world. This is a, this is a real big opportunity for us to hopefully take great advantage of and for the guys just to go out and play and we'll take care of the rest. Hey buddy, what's going on? I just had to jump off the can and on, sir. Oh, I, you could have kept on that. No, it's all good. What's going on? Uh, just, just wanted to get an update. Uh, I haven't heard anything from any, everybody, but... In regards to this training facility thing, I'm just going to do what you told me to do and ask for the building from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. pretty much. Okay. Um, we're going to try and get a call to Kathy Ann today. At Kathy Ann's uh, where? At, at uh, the Y? Yeah. Okay. And then me and Joe are talking tomorrow to kind of finalize things, and I'll just get him on board so that he can start getting everybody else on board. I think people want this event to be flawless, but there's no way for it internally to be flawless. We put together a, a seven-team tournament a $2 million event in a month. Like, yeah. There's no way for it to be perfect. We're going to do everything in our, our power to make it as normal as possible. It'll be far from normal, but they just have to buy in. 
If everybody buys in, we're in a much better position. It's just the way it is. We live in times that are not normal. So we will make the best of it and we'll find out quick if people are on board or not, right? We had to reevaluate how we're gonna get through this. Uh, we knew we had one thing going for us. We had some time on our side. We're gonna use this as a learning period because how many other times in life do you have time to almost reset, take a deep breath, use what you did last year as a, you know, a launching point for what you're gonna do when we do come back. So we're in a much better situation now knowing that we can play. And you know, that is a good thing in many, many ways. And I'm very thankful that all of our staff across the board bought into the belief that, yeah, we're gonna ride the wave on this. Whether we play or not, we'll be okay. I think that was a strong message. And let's look at ways to get better. Yeah, just whatever you and I do, let's not bite off anymore. We've already, I got 10 roasts in the oven. I got a two right now. It, uh, it's almost, the workload is almost to the point where we can't handle it. Yo, I know, we gotta, we, we gotta stay within what we can accomplish, right? And, and do yeah. it properly. So the, the big thing for me is, you know, which is Dan's already on it, is when to bring in the international players. If they're coming from areas that aren't as good as Canada, that we need to make sure that we don't just lump them in with everybody right off the bat, right? Get some time yeah. to get them tested, kind of keep keep them self-isolated, and then evaluate after that. Listen, it, if it makes sense, then we do it. And then you're right, if if they come back and say, okay, after the fact we've already flown them in, they're in town already, and then that legislation switches and, and they pass the test and everything's good, then they'll have more freedom to be able to continue their training on their own rather than stuck in a room. You know, all the hard work, you're starting to see it pay off a little bit. The guys, as you can see behind me, are lining up, getting ready for their testing. Uh, people have come in, or players have come in last night, and everyone will be in today, and then within a handful of days, we'll be back on a court. <laughs> That's gonna be nervous. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Have you ever had the sun before? No. Nah. Okay, so it's going to feel like water rushing up your nose when you jump into a pool. Okay. It's not painful, but not pleasant. But yeah. 10 seconds in your office. Okay. Okay. You're doing great. You're doing great. Right where we need to be. A little bit longer now. And five, four, three, two, one, and you're done. Good job. It was light. One two, one two tier, but you know. Yeah, I just got it. If I didn't make you cry, I wouldn't do my job right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you too. I never felt anything like that before. I don't know. They said it was like jumping in a pool, but it's way worse. It was way. <laughs> it goes way back there, man. I don't know. It's been it's been fantastic. I got to give a, a ton of credit to all the work that's done behind the scenes with our staff, with Niagara Public Health. It's been fantastic, and and we're encouraged. I mean, the, the uh, province of Ontario, uh, Canada in general, has done a great job flattening the curve to allow us the opportunity to do what we're doing here today, and uh, it can only get better from here. I recommend if someone needs to get a test done, by absolutely go do it. It's it's a longer 10 seconds than what you think it is, but uh, no problem. Around the road. It's uh, I find the uh, the commute's actually good though. In the morning, you kind of get up like again, like a you know we're working all hours of the day to get this thing going, and, and it kind of gives you that little buffer, right? March 13th, I can kind of remember the day where we knew something was wrong and that it was gonna have a big impact on. We didn't know how big, obviously, but it was gonna have a big impact on what we were doing. We had to immediately stop selling stuff. We had to make sure that um, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't tone deaf to what was going on in the world. And 
and from there on out, we found the positives. Like we didn't, the big thing for us was always, you know, I think Richard tipped this off. If you want to know how he's been involved? He said to us, he said, this isn't going to, uh, this isn't going to kill my business, right? Hi, morning. We didn't say things until we had to say them. We weren't out there trying to suggest that we were going to save the world. We just wanted to suggest that we could be part of people's happiness in a pretty crappy time. Originally, we said, okay, you know what? We might miss a couple games. You know, month, month after that, it was okay, we're going to miss into June. We go through 10 or so other contingencies, and then from that kind of emerges this idea of a 2020 summer series. We didn't want it to be perceived as a tournament. It's not a tournament, it's our season, right? It's 26 games. And I would suggest that by, you know, I won't put a day on it, but by the end of April, we, we, you know, we were understanding that this was more and more the best opportunity to us. And, and we, until we announced, I would say in June, we, we really, you know, this wasn't set in stone, but we were always working towards it. And then what we could do is in those windows, we can strategically place a rep. So make sure that whoever's coming in is authorized to come in and there's no one else. So, and once they're in and out, then really there shouldn't be any thoroughfare happening. I would say rack, static, static, ward one section, really that. And then just keep that halfway mark. This is kind of like your station side of the court. John, so literally what I was thinking was, you know, instead of having them suit up, you know, they may forget a short, so they may wear the wrong socks, whatever. We'll just have rolling racks set up here with their team gear. They come in, they change, yeah. static, static, yeah. and then the three video one. This is our 2020 season. This is our second season. This is not a one-off event. This is, this, is, this is our version of the second season for the CBL to be able to keep that momentum going, to still profile our athletes, to become Canada's league, and to laud on the fact that we are a new basketball experience on broadcast and channels only, not live is the biggest challenge. It's amazing to work with the Y because one, they have best-in-class equipment, they have best-in-class facilities from the weight training areas to the basketball courts in them, and yeah, that's important. That's important to still give the players, it's one thing to have the players come down in a quote-unquote hub city location, but to give them elite quality training facilities is huge, and the Y has been tremendous for us. Just, just imagine, and again, remember our mantra is to find the positive in everything, but when you're trying to find the positive in, in zero facilities opening their doors to, to the summer series, it, uh, it gets a little bit daunting. But we were, we had great partners, man. Like Meridian Center stepped up. They said, yeah, you know what? If it's safe, we'll have you. YMCA Niagara, you know, same, same as that. They, they just kind of said, well, let's see if it's safe. Let's talk to, there's always elements you have to include that you wouldn't think of before, right? Insurance and safety of people. So I would say just, Making sure it's safe was the single most important and single most challenging thing for our business as we set this up. I don't think there's really words that can describe how big this moment is for this sport in Canada. Like, I mean, you've got a league here in its second season that's been put into the middle of a pandemic and yep, there's more important things than sport. But I think there's gonna be a lot of people tuning into this thing saying how did they pull this off one but two this is pretty damn cool when well, media day is going to be a huge day for us on the 16th the whole concept is that every team shows up for one one location media day. typically uh, teams would do this on their own in their own uh, town or city or facility to put that all down in one day is a huge task so I'm really thankful to the team the operational team really gets all the credit for it. I'm pretty awesome. happy and looking forward to um, what's to come. I printed out this. So to keep that one black? Yeah, but you have your gold logo. Okay. Right? And then this one I just had to use for reference for the things. And then, so then each of them, this one I didn't quite like, I was just starting to brainstorm. Right. So. Almost 
instantes. Um, what what will the quarantining look like for this, Mike? It's a combination of a lot of things. It involves testing. It involves quarantining. We actually have our international players coming in. They are going to be in a room for 14 days, and that's kind of give them credit because that's not an easy easy pill to swallow, but they're going to do it because they want to play ball. Basically, no one's getting in unless they're part of the group and they've gone through all the protocols to get in and be cleared. What's good with you? Oh, I got here June 30th. June 30th, um, straight from the airport, came here. Um, when I got here, I actually had to come, well, I didn't come straight to my room. I stayed outside for about 30 minutes. Then once I got to my room, I wasn't allowed to leave. I uh, quarantined for two weeks. Then we had to take the test once we got out. So then I had to wait on the results. Day one, came through those doors right there. Uh, they gave us basically the, um, the COVID test shove the thing up our nose. Everybody kind of had to stick to themselves. Um, two days later, we got our results, and then after that, we could start going on with our practice pro uh, processes. We're supposed to try and stay in our rooms as much as possible. Obviously, it's not like a, it's not a perfect situation because like we do have to eat, we do have to get groceries and stuff like that, but in terms of the um, going out, partying, all that stuff, it doesn't really exist. Like we are, we're, we're pretty all responsible about it and trying to make sure we're keeping each other safe. Jelaine has a, has a Costco membership. He's been taking good care of me. Gotta love Costco, man. Yep. Really what we're doing here is I'm trying to have somebody want to come challenge me for uh, some money. So I'm making them think I'm really bad at video games so that I can uh, take your money later. In case anybody else in the bubble sees this and wants some smoke. Right now, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a rule where every, every team has to have a U Sports guy. Within the next few years, it's not gonna be, I think that rule's gonna be removed. I think it's gonna be, hey, wait a minute. The U Sports guys are pretty talented. Maybe we just start recruiting them right off the bat, right? When it comes to freshly graduated, like I think a lot of guys are ready to come here and compete at this level. I mean, if you really think about it, this is probably one of the better leagues in the world, just based on the fact that everybody here is an import somewhere else, right? So I'd say I've learned that I can play at this level, but I still have a tremendous amount of work to do if I want to be as good as I want to be. Canadians are very supportive of each other. I feel like they, once they see, hey, we got Canadian basketball players playing basketball in Canada, let me give it a watch. I'm not doing anything anyways. They turn it on, they say, hey, this quality of basketball is really good. It's like ACB or that's the Spain league or Germany won or right and they say okay and next thing you know we have a huge fan base my earliest memory I'm nine years old I got picked up by uh, an OBA team which is in Ontario we play rep basketball all right this is my first tournament never played any never even, I went to probably five practices I was a soccer player I scored one basket in the whole tournament and it was in the wrong basket I'm, an, I'm, I'm a normal sized person playing in a, in a sport that's for tall people. I think the uh, nature of the beast is because we had the big quarantine. I think I need to get back to where I was first off. I need to get back the ability to shoot the ball pretty well and uh, all that kind of stuff. I want to put on a little bit more size. Uh, I feel like that's that's been hindering me a little bit. There's a bunch of things, right? Like I could list off a reason to have a chip on your shoulder.
to fail a bunch of times and still get up and still have to push and get better and continue to develop is exactly what I've had to do. Hey Elijah, what's up? Where are you? I'm in my room. No, I'm not playing until Saturday. You're gonna watch my game on TV with Nana, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. How's your day today? Good. Daddy, <laughs> I want you to come home. I know, I wanna come home. That's why I'm gonna see you tomorrow because I can't stay away from you for too long. Okay? Oh, I know. We're gonna have fun tomorrow though, I promise. Okay. okay? If I was 25 now and no child, like my whole personality and everything would be different. Just kind of like, you know, put things into perspective and um, made me hustle harder for the things that I wanted in life to, to show him that he can do it too, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> right now for the CEBL, having a pro league in Canada for guys that have, you know, families and stuff like that, it's amazing because you don't have to go abroad to go make money, you know what I mean? You can stay at home, play the game you love, and your family can be there too, which is a huge bonus, you know? Um, especially starting out in your career, being able to, you know, play pro basketball with your little one there, seeing the whole, whole process, bringing him in the change room after games, is like, we're making memories in that. Um, the CBL actually took a picture of me and him on the court for Father's Day when I was holding his hand walking across the court. So that was a big moment for me. Uh, that was a really, really big moment. Like when he gets older, he's gonna see that. He was on the court with his dad in a pro game. So I think uh, if I was overseas, I wouldn't have a, a memory like that, you know? So yeah, like having this league in Canada is amazing for us, like for sure, definitely amazing. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Elijah, I love you. Let's go play ball outside. Okay, bye. Bye. So I just been uh, rewatching all the games that I played last year, and then uh, last summer with the Stingers too. But I ain't no NBA, they just started back, so now I got to catch up on that. But it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, as far as like just being in this room. Kept myself busy. I had a bike in here. Um, my room didn't look nothing like this. I had my beds over there. I had like my little dribbling station over here, had my bike, had my bands, my kettlebells and all that stuff set up. So pretty much had my own home gym in here. So keeping myself busy, working out, um, like I said, watching film, reading, all that. So it wasn't a bad quarantine, but I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> when, the, when they told us we can get out that morning, I was gone. I got the nickname Costco last season because um, that's exactly what I was working at, you know? Like this is what's gonna take to be in the real world now I'm done school, you know what I mean? Like I gotta, I gotta get into like, you know, just some money for my son. So um, yeah, I was doing both. I was playing basketball and then also um, going to Costco in the morning before practice. Before, you know, practices would start, I'd be morning shift at Costco, which would go anywhere between like 4 a.m. to 10. 5 a.m. to 11, and then straight after work, I go straight to practice right after, you know? The days were long, but I think that summer really made me into like the person that I wanted to be. It was tough, it was definitely tough. You know, there were some practices where I was like, my legs were tired because I was on my feet for like six hours. Um, I was up at 3 a.m. It made me into the person I am now. It, it was just a testament of just really working hard for the things that you want. It's, it's stories like that that I'm gonna tell my son, like, if I can do all this, there's no reason why whatever your goals are, like, there's, you can't attain them. We know our spot. We're not the NBA, we're not the Toronto Raptors, but we're a damn good basketball league, and we're the best league, in my opinion, outside of the NBA. Our game will prove it, and this summer series will be a showcase for us. Uh, we wish you all the best, because what you're doing is, uh, is something that we both believe in, and that is uh, helping Canadians uh, achieve something that we, we don't really do in this country, and that is uh, domestic pro leagues at a high level.